Welcome to New Realities. I'm Alan Steinfeld, and I'm really happy to have here with me today someone I've been talking to in touch with, Robbie Holtz, who's written two amazing books about Aboriginal healing, and these are them, The Secrets of Aboriginal Healing and Aboriginal Secrets of Awakening. And I just spent some time with the Australian Aborigines, and they really are special people. And I know your story and your journeys are remarkable. And so I want to know everything they told you. <laughs> <laughs> because I, I got a little bit, but that's 60,000 years of oral history. And they are probably the most spiritual people I've ever met. So yeah. let's start with your husband. Okay. I mean, in this book, The Secrets of Aboriginal Healing, and talk about how, what his condition and what happened. Okay. Uh, my husband, Gary, is yes. a physicist, mm -hmm. and very much scientific, black and white, doesn't exist unless you can prove it scientifically. Mm -hmm. And he ended up with multiple sclerosis mm -hmm. and became a quadriplegic. And he had been dealing with MS for at least 20 years and been a quadriplegic for at least seven, which meant he had no feeling from the neck down. And the doctors, Western Medicine, gave him a death sentence that said, you know, you're starting to, the, the organs are starting to shut down. And he, he mm. had about six months to live. So he went but to the aboriginals. He I mean, found out that the aborigines have remarkable healing gifts. How did he find that out? That's the interesting part. Okay. Well, he um, went into a jazz bar to kind of soothe his soul, having just heard that you're, you know, uh, going to be passing uh, fairly soon. And he met a woman who was a naturopathic physician from Australia. Uh -huh. And she said that the remote aborigines have remarkable healing abilities. I know how to get in touch with them. And so even though he was the scientist and his logical mind said that's insane to go into the outback and have this, these remote tribes help me heal, he made that phone call. To the aboriginals. To the aboriginals. One of the aboriginals had an apartment in Brisbane because he had children that lived in the city uh -huh. who had grown. So he kind of traversed both, traversed both worlds. So when he called that number, Ray was the man, he answered um, and said, what, do you, what took you so long? We've been waiting for four months. And they just knew that. They just knew. They're so tuned in. They're so tapped in to this wow. greater consciousness. And so he went. And, and what was the essence of their healing? The essence of their healing is they, well, I know that he worked with a, a, an Aboriginal who was part English, part Aboriginal, who yeah. knew how to speak English, how to mm -hmm. communicate to him, because they wanted him to take their healing techniques out into the world, because they mm -hmm. said, we really don't understand how healing works, and they mm -hmm. wanted to help us because we don't understand it's a body mind spirit the aborigines say we don't understand we just the, know the aborigines say we civilized tribes don't understand how healing works we us we civilized us. tribes do not understand how it works and 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 so what is it how does it work i mean what it, did it's an alignment of the body mind spirit right well, well just back to your husband after 10 days time he then had feeling in his body which he hadn't had in seven years he totally regained that he understood how the disease had progressed and created, and uh -huh. he also clumsily walked down that airplane aisle on the way back. Where he did, couldn't there. No, and he also no longer had MS. He uh -huh. had the effects now of MS, but he no longer had a, a progressive What did they do process. to him? Well, they were, the Aboriginal village and the remote Aboriginals had never seen a white person before. This was very unusual for them to have a white person come into their remote village. I believe that they envisioned him well. They saw him well. Mm -hmm. They were sending energy to help heal him. Mm -hmm. And the, he worked with a, uh, two healers, Ray and Rose, who were helping him understand what had created this, help him get to that emotional core, the emotional root, mm -hmm. because that has to be removed or it'll, they said it's like picking a dandelion, it'll come mm -hmm. right back again. So beyond, b below all illness or dis-ease is um, an emotional, an attitude, something. Exactly. There's an emotional core, an emotional component. It starts out as an emotional <laughs> seed, emotional mm -hmm. core, a belief system that creates dis-ease. If you keep ignoring that and go far enough down that road, now you have a disease. So, so the physical is just a sign. It's just a signal. It's a messenger. So you get in your healing, and we'll get to you because mm -hmm. you've had some serious things happen to you. Yeah. 
where you get to the emotion, you deal with the emotion, and then it, then the physical dissolves. Right. It's a body, mind, spirit. You have to have uh, all of those aligned. Mm -hmm. And so, but the main thing that we tend to not, we really ignore here in the Western world is the emotional component. Right. And also, what's the soul's voice in this? Uh, because doesn't the soul sometimes create some of those things so they can learn something? Yes. You'll see children who come in with mm. disabilities mm. or with challenges because that's exactly how, what their soul needed for them on their growth, on their mm. pattern. Although I did hear a shaman friend say, we're not here to learn the lesson, we're here to get the message. If we don't get the message, we learn the lesson. Exactly. <laughs> well, well, put. well put. So in your case, though, you almost died a few times. Twice. Tw what, what, yeah. Well, I delivered uh, when I delivered my son 30 years ago, it was a rough delivery, and so I ended up with a blood transfusion, which oh. had hepatitis C. Oh. And 30 years ago, they weren't testing for it. They called it non-A, non-B, and mm. they certainly didn't have a, a cure if they didn't even really have a name for it. Mm. So the hepatitis almost killed me, and then the experimental treatment that the doctors put me on almost killed me. So twice I survived. But what, what, so what happened? How did you, but you healed it now. I did. I mean, Western medicine didn't have any answers for me. And mm -hmm. so I was determined to stay alive because I had this little boy as a high motivator. And I started seeking answers. And at this point, I was really a mess. Mm -hmm. By the time they were done with the experimental treatments, I couldn't finish a sentence. There was so much wow. brain damage. I didn't know what I was talking about. I couldn't get out of bed for about six to nine months. I couldn't walk to, simple things like walking to the mailbox. Wow. And so I needed to survive. I needed to find answers. And I started finding, as you know, that there's a lot of answers out there. Was this before Gary went? This is before and Gary. And before you met Gary, even? Yes. Yes, yes. And so, so I found, so I ended up healing myself of mm -hmm. the hepatitis C, totally curing it, he healing the fibromyalgia. Wait, through the Aboriginal technique? Through the Aboriginal, yes, it's the same, it's the same concept. Wait, so you, he concept. went there, you saw his success with his illness, and then you went? Well, he actually had, I didn't meet him till after I had healed it, but I realized it's the same principles. It's the mm. same healing principles. And what, what, well, let's go through those. And, and okay. then you actually did end up going to. I did go into the outback later, right. To meet right. these people, and we'll right. talk about that next phase, which is the awakening. They do live in bliss when they're in this element. They're showing us how to live these higher vibrational states, how to live in an awakening state, what that looks like, and how to. Because they are awakened. They're awakened. They're already living in this. Can we say that generally? Because there were little skirmishes among the Aboriginal tribes. I mean, there were like, was it, was it well, paradise? Well, you know, it's just like there's always variations to that wherever you go. But right. I'm talking about the remote Aborigines. And that's a very small percentage. Mm -hmm. It's like 21% of the Aboriginal population. Actually, I do have to say that the genocide committed against the Aborigines mm -hmm. and their culture is the worst worse than the Holocaust, the worst I've ever heard of anywhere on the planet. It went on until 1967. And it's still going on. Yeah, you know, the, yeah. the Prime Minister said Aborigines should live different ways. And so it's still happening, and there's a resurgence of their culture because they hold the secrets to everything we're discovering in this age of consciousness. They've already moved beyond where we are, they, right. Years ago, and they have secrets to tell us if we're willing to. So in your process, when you went out there, what did you learn from these Aborigines? Well, you mean in the healing realm? Yes, or in the in the, realm? no, in the healing realm. Okay, when in the we'll healing realm. Well, they'll tell you that the mind plus the big guy, and that's a genderless term for divine source, mm -hmm. you know, God, goddess, whatever you choose to call it. But the, the mind plus the big guy equals anything. And that when you align the body, mind, spirit together, anything will heal. But most people are not recognizing the role that the mind plays in the illness. Mm -hmm. And so the first step is you have to be willing. There may be some subconscious reasons you don't want to get well. Mm -hmm. You're not willing to change, but that's mm -hmm. the first step. You have to be willing to make some changes. The second step is you need to become aware of why is this illness here in your life? What does it show you? It's a messenger. And if mm -hmm. you no longer need the messenger, then you no longer need the illness. Right. So once you get the message. Right. And how do you, how does that show up practically with people? Like, how, how have you seen it working with people? Well, like, you know, people will, um, that's the emotional root. Mm -hmm. That's the emotional core. For instance, if you have a lot of fear running through you, a lot of stress, mm -hmm. that is running throughout the entire system, and it will create some problems. That can be 
come fibromyalgia, where it's mm-hmm. system-wide. If you're holding a lot of grief in your chest area, this is where we tend to hold that emotion, and you keep creating a lot of grief and you're not releasing mm-hmm. it, you could develop breast cancer or heart problems. And if you have a tendency in your in your family mm-hmm. to have that, you need to become aware of that. Mm-hmm. People don't really have an awareness that different emotions create a different cell, a different response. And the fear-based emotions, which are generated mm-hmm. by the mind, ha- they're dense, they're heavy, they are a lower vibration, and it's a perfect breeding ground for disease. All right, so you go into that with the person. You say, okay, what are you afraid of? What right. do you... And then you help extract that and, and right. help them resolve those issues. Right. Like I was raised Catholic. I know guilt better than anybody. And it's mm-hmm. part of my kind of default mode sometimes. It's just quietly running in the background. And guilt is one of the hardest emotions for the body to handle. Oh, it is. So you have to become aware of what kind of emotions am I marinating in regularly and what kind of damage is it creating to the body. So the love-based emotions, they hold a lot of the life force. Mm -hmm. They are a high vibration, and disease can't sustain in high vibration. So gratitude is a fabulous emotion to have to create healing. So how do you get over your guilt? Let's say you're feeling guilty. What do you do? You recognize it's the mind feeding you that. And you don't need to feel guilty about anything. It's just the mind feeding you that belief system. So you start recognizing whose voice is that. Oh, it's probably your mother's. Probably my mother's. (laughs) (laughs) Or the nuns. Who knows? Or the nuns. So, and that's what your husband worked with with the Aborigines Mm -hmm. on those levels. Mm -hmm. And, and... Right. He needed to understand that he had had a very abusive uh, childhood. His father was an alcoholic, and he beat him. And so he was such a brilliant man. Gary Uh, learned how to numb himself emotionally until he literally numbed himself physically. Oh. So he needed to learn how to forgive his father and recognize that some of our most painful teachers are some of our best teachers. Why did he create that in his life? What What was his soul wanting to learn? I mean, to create that. that. Was, that's a good question. It was a powerful way for her to, him to learn how to, it made him stronger. Mm. It made him become more independent. It made him find the love and the power from within, not from without. Mm. And it, it made him who he was, a very strong man. So mm. there, that's why some of the most painful experiences become the best gifts. Right. So the other aspect of your work here is mm-hmm. the second book you wrote, which, mm-hmm. I mean, healing is great. And of course, we need that and we need right. to know these secrets. But the real message of the Aborigine, I mean, which, which is more whole, wholly a part of them, is the awakened consciousness. Right. That's what I found with them. Yes, they know healing and they know, right. you know how to talk to the land, but this awakening, let's talk about right. that. Because that's really what's important. And, and the mm. reason I like to do the healing also is because most people don't need to be sick. It's not part of their soul's journey. Right. Their bodies are just crumbling under the emotional weight. So that's, let's get you well so then you can do what you're here to do. Right. And what is that? Why? What are that's we here for? That's the question. For? That's why are you here? Why are we here? Yes. And well, everybody's different. Well, I think there are different and it's the same. We're here to wake up. We're here to enjoy life. We're here to appreciate the manifested mystery that's all around us right and to, to live in the wonder and you know australia is such a lush abundant land mm-hmm. that there's so much there that they didn't have a society where you have to work nine to five there was no separation between their life and their work and their culture and their family uh, you know i love how there's no possessive they don't have a possessive word they don't use my your ours that, that's not a concept that they're even aware right. of. Right. Wouldn't the wives of some of the men, you know, welcome the strangers de- de- into de- their... <laughs> Depends on the tribe, you know. I mean, there's hundreds of them Of out course, there there's now. hundreds of Aboriginal yes. tribes, and they yes. all have their slightly different culture. But, but the part where, uh, in Robert Lawler's book, mm-hmm. The uh, Voices of, of the First Day, they say, we're here to live free and naked and open and touch with the elements is is the core of all the Aboriginal cultures that I've seen. Right. Right. They'll tell you what we're missing is our connection to to Mother Earth. uh And that when we started speaking out loud, we lost that connection. We couldn't hear anymore. They think speaking out loud is very primitive and chaotic. What is as the p- old language is tele- telepathy? They would have that. They still do it. They still do it. And we quit doing it, and that's where we lost our connection. We couldn't hear the plants telling us which ones heal what. We couldn't hear the trees singing to us. We couldn't hear. This is what all the indigenous cultures all over the world will tell you. Mm-hmm. The mountains speak to each other. 
we've lost that connection. And the plants speak to us. The plants speak to us. The trees are very lonely. They're so happy when you acknowledge them. Mm, I noticed that with the Joshua trees I was just out in the desert. They're like mm. people standing there. and Waiting they're... for you to, yeah. Mm. And the spirit of the land, actually the Aborigines would give birth to these spirit children. Did you learn about that at all? Yeah, beautiful. Yeah, so. I, and I love how the land is like their cathedral. Mm. It's, it's all, that's the church, is, is everything. There's no separation. But did they have to learn something when the English came in? What was that? Because they were living in a paradise. They really were. Well, so were the American Indians. So were right. a lot of these indigenous cultures. Right. But, and, it, and look at all the look at all the other creatures on the planet waiting for us to wake but up. But what was it that they had to learn about that really harsh encounter with these Awful Europeans. That well, would... I remember, I, I know, aren't we something? <laughs> well, everybody, there's always been war in every culture. We right. can blame ourselves as Europeans, but, right. you know, but. And, and I think it comes down to, Alan, it's not just, not only what they did, but even to the present moment, how are you reacting? Are you reacting out of fear, which is mm -hmm. the mind, and trying to control it or fight fear with fear? Or are you moving forward with love? Mm. That's really the answer. What kind of energy are you adding to the moment? Mm. I did ask my Aboriginal friend when he said he could, you, you, he wasn't even allowed to look a white person in the eye or when he picked up a glass in a restaurant, he had to wrap it in a napkin because they didn't want his skin touching the glass. I said, aren't you angry? about all this? And he said, no, he doesn't have any time to be angry. He's too it's, appreciating everything. Right. When you're in those higher vibrational states, you're not into that. So what is their level of awakening in this that you write they about? Are, you know, they're in, a, they're in a higher level of acceptance. Mm -hmm. They're just at peace with things. They recognize that there's a reason for everything. The Aborigines will tell you there's no accidents or misfits, nothing mm -hmm. random. Everything happens for a reason, so they understand that. How can we reach that level, us as people in the world? That's a great question. I think you start recognizing what the mind is feeding you on a regular basis. What our program mind yes, is feeding us. right. And, and start keep coming back to what would love do in this moment, not the, not the programmed mind with its criticisms and judgments. And but we live in such a different culture. You know, their culture was abundant. You know, just they, they mm -hmm. you know, it wasn't work. It wasn't like a stress of survival. I don't think they even realized had a thing about survival. It was just given to them. Well, it's just like nature. They don't, they, that's not a fear for them. They just know they're taken care of. Right. They just know how to tune in and follow the intuition. And we're living, coming from survival. We're much more primitive a culture than these people that Absolutely. have Absolutely. evolved. Absolutely, yes. So how do we go beyond survival and live in this awakened way? I think you start coming back to the present moment more. Oh. Don't let that mind take you off into the past or into the future or all kinds of things present moment. That's going to bring you back to what's mm -hmm. really, that's where your power is. Mm. And how do you understand dream time? How do you interpret that? As I understand it, that the, and I can't speak for all the tribes, I just know the ones I've been experiencing that Gary experienced. Gary said that he saw the little three-year-olds going into dream time and that they would spend more than half of their time into dream time. What, what does that mean? That means that they're going in, they're unplugging from the mind. Mm -hmm. We might call it meditation for us. Mm -hmm. They're unplugging from the mind and they're going into this, they're tapping into this higher consciousness. This, mm -hmm. They're going into these other realities that will tell you are more real than this. This is an illusion. I mean, I was hanging out with them and listening to them talk about it. What I understood about dream time was, um, you know, if we close our eyes, we think all we have is our psychology. But what we really, that's, that's a lie that Western science has told us. What we really have is a connection that keeps going. Yes. So we really, even with our eyes closed, even with this inner sensing, we are constantly being fed through the dream time awareness of our connection to the source. We're still getting information. And I, I think that exactly. might be a sort of dream time. Exactly. That there's no disconnect from the inner and outer world. Right. You know, when I open my eyes and feel my senses that we're being fed by the universe, but even the interior world's being fed. Exactly, exactly. And that's an awakened state. Yes. I love how the Aborigines will go in and they, they, they'll say that we civilized tribes don't really use our subconscious minds. Mm. And we're not, they will go in and actively create what they want. 
we call it quantum physics. Mm. You know, they've been doing this for a long time. It's, it's interesting how science is just waking up to what or, these... Or the secret, the law of attraction. Absolutely, or, absolutely. So what you put out is what's coming back. And they knew that. They know, they've known it for thousands, you know, at least mm. 60,000 years. If not, I think it's longer. So how can we get back to our... I think we start, we need to wake up. One by one, it's happening. One by one, we're waking up. And that's why I'm excited and hopeful about the future. And I think what matters is what kind of energy am I adding to the moment? Is it more love-based or is it the mind? Often it's fear. And what, because whatever I'm feeding myself is affecting others around me, not just my body, but mm -hmm. it's affecting those around me and the planet. So you start moving more, shifting that mind more into love-based reactions. It's mm -hmm. just old habits. It's mm -hmm. just kind of what the culture is telling us at the moment. Yeah, but on a global level, how do we shift a, a global culture that is very disconnected? You, one person at a time. You one pay person. attention to you. Okay. And what comes to you? What, how are you reacting to it? Because right. it's very deliberate what comes to you and what's in your path. Mm. It's, it's, it's there for a reason. It's there to show you and help you grow. Right. Another key message of the Aborigines is how they deal with their children and their family. Yes. Talk about that. What is their awakening approach? Well, there's approach? so many things. I mean, I love how they teach the little ones right from the get-go how it's about sharing. There's never any possessiveness. There's never any competition. They don't have words for this. It's not part of their belief system. They're at this higher level of how to be of service, how to be in love. It's more love-oriented. It's not mind, greedy, competitive, judging criticism. They're, that just doesn't exist. We're not idolizing them at all, thinking like, oh, they had it all. I mean, is there a part of, or do we do some of that? Or is it truly that, from your experience, they really had that? enlightened culture. I think that they have much to show us. They have some beautiful wisdom that they're willing to show and share with the world and I think that it's a gift. Mm. Their healing, the fact that they were willing to give us their healing secrets and ask us to take it out into the world because we so desperately need it, it is a beautiful gift. But and was I'm that a secret that. though? Because I mean... No, we'll, we can call it Aboriginal secrets but it's something that they haven't really disclosed. They've, the fact that the mind creates it all. Right. Right, but and how, and that, that mind is a very powerful tool. It can either sabotage you or heal you. The yeah. ones that we encountered were incredibly loving. Mm. They are so connected to the planet. They are so grateful for Gaia. They're so uh, aware that we're all one and that we're all connected. And that what you do to one, you do to you know to others. And so there's just there's beautiful wisdom there. And I think mm. that. Um, you know, when I was there in 2008, we were the women were invited and we participated in ceremonies that were incredibly powerful. Like and, what did you do? Well, we were, you know, and I don't know that we white women really knew what was going on other than we're here and mm. we're raising our frequency, our vibration to create thunderstorms because they needed rain. Did you create thunderstorms? How did you do that? I can't tell you that, Alan. Oh, that come on. Ceremony. Oh, come on. <laughs> it's just us. Did you really <laughs> learn how to do that? Well, I certainly can't do it on my own. We did it together. And they said that mm -hmm. the energy of the white women who had been invited to participate um, added significantly so that it was a high enough vibration. We created thunderstorms that just kept circling around the camp. I didn't mm -hmm. know we were going to be doing that, or I would have rolled up my sleeping bag mm -hmm. so that I didn't have the memory of sleeping in a cold, freezing desert in a wet sleeping bag. That's, mm -hmm. that's a memory maker there. Mm -hmm. but, they, but when we went back to the hotel after we were finished, uh, at the end of the week, they, the conkier said they mm. hadn't seen storms like that in like five wow. years. So it's very powerful. They, they, they don't, they don't, they just align. They don't mm. plead. They just sort of align. They know that they're out of alignment. Also about the difference between the men and the women. Well, you know, uh, I'll give you an example. Mm. When it came to the women wanted to open up their ceremonies and invite other women from around the world, there were about 20 of us that were invited to participate. Uh, the men didn't want any part of it. They did not want mm -hmm. to be opening up their their wisdom and their ceremonies to the white person. I mean, understandably mm -hmm. so. We've taken a lot from them. But the women prevailed. Right. And so the men supported the women. And the men were outside the ceremonies. We never actually saw them because what we were doing was so powerful that we needed the men to be holding the energy, grounding us, keeping us safe. And mm -hmm. so they were working together. No, but in their culture, there's a real difference between men's roles and women's roles and how they interact that's different than Western 
Can you talk about that? Every Each tribe, tribe is, is a different. little different. Yeah, so I really can't describe all of them, but I do know that um, it's shared. That it's what do you what do you want mm. to do? And that you know, the, Gary was telling me the beautiful story about how when the hunter would come back, the hunter would be the last to eat, mm. and the next time the hunter would be the first. There's no they don't feed the ego. Right. And if they were to celebrate you, you have an event where they celebrate you, the next day they make sure that you have the lowliest task so that the ego is not being fed. So it's mm. probably not answering your question, but I'm... No, it is because I think um, these people are so complex and they're so evolved in a way yes. and, they, and they function on a level that we don't really understand. Right. Because the ego is not involved. Right. The I mind is not involved. So there's something else happening that we're, as white Westerners, don't get, you know? We don't get that there's this um, energy that we can play with, that we can be a part of. They're more tapped into this higher consciousness and operating from that. They're more coming from this, the heart, the soul, and mm. whereas our culture tends to be more mind-oriented. Right. And that needs to be shifted. So you've shifted right. that for yourself. Yes. You're not going to the mind. You're going to, how's I it feel? I when I can, you know, but I start paying attention to if I, if there is a discomfort emotionally, what's going on here? And right. you start waking up to, okay, what's the mind telling me? What's it feeding me? Whose voice is that? Mm. Could be moms again. I don't know. Could be the small inner child. I think it's great that you've really investigated this culture that so much needs a resurgence mm -hmm. and a and a revival because um, they have the ancient wisdom. They they knew how to act in regards to the to the planet and the environment. And, right. And we have totally forgot that. And to survive, we need to go back to that again. Yeah. So, what tip can you give people? I think that you know to remember that this planet loves us tremendously. That is so good. Thank you. No, <laughs> it does love us. It does, and to you know, I, I love how some of these indigenous cultures will say that the br they treat the river like a brother. Mm. That's a whole different way of reacting, and to know, I've had people tell me that they've gone to trees, and those trees are just lonely. They just would love to have appreciation, or that's a different way of living. So right. come back to your connection to the planet. We have that sensitive sensitivity to be aware of that. I know we do, because when I look at the moon, I have a special relationship mm -hmm. with the moon. Mm -hmm. It talks to me in yeah. its way, but, you know, the culture wants to say, no, it's not true. And Well, that's what we're waking up to. Yeah. That's what we're waking up to, is back to our roots, back to what's really going on, and, and getting our connection back to the planet, which the Aborigines have always maintained. So isn't it amazing how simple this three-dimensional level is when there's so much complexity and so much energy that's happening on right. all these other realms. Right. It's very exciting times as we create this resurgence of the true human being, mm -hmm. the real, what do they call it? The Aborigines call it like the real society or the real time. Wasn't there a name for that in some the real person or the mm -hmm. whole person, the awakened, the awakened person. The awakened person, exactly. So that's what we're moving into. That's what we're moving into. We're waking up and we're shifting from the mind and shifting back into the heart. The heart. How do we know if we're in the heart or not? Is it love-based or is it fear-based? Mm. If it's fear-based, it's, it's the mind. If it's trying to control, if it's, there's guilt, if there, it's, there's judgment, that's the mind. Mm. It's just conditioning. It's part of our, it's a habit, it's part of our society. And we're shifting back, we're wakening up to what the mind has been feeding us, pulling the curtain back and seeing what, if, what observing those thoughts rather than buying into it, which mm. is what a lot of us are on autopilot, not even aware of it, and start moving back to, is this a loving response? Uh -huh. Is this going to help the planet? Is this going to help me? Is this, is it, I mean, moving from love. How do we get that to the corporations? Because they're the ones, I mean, not to blame them, it's also us, but we, but they're the ones that are destroying our planet. <laughs> well, you know, and I love that there's a group in Australia that is currently, people from all over the world, and they're like, no blame, no anger, let's just, let's just get to it. Mm. There's no, it's, it comes down to yourself. One by one, we're waking up. One by one, we're adding beautiful energy to the planet and to mm. ourselves. One by one, it's changing. Like one by one, okay, I'm not going to change everybody, but I want to do the best job I can do is what comes back to me. I want it to be peaceful and great and loving, and I feel like I'm not 
doing enough, you know, because I see everything else around me. What can I do? Well, that's the mind thinking it needs to fix things. Uh, it's not accepting that this is a beautiful place for us to grow and learn. Mm. It's not accepting other people's journeys and their choices. And as we continue to accept how other people learn and grow on their journeys, we're adding a different energy to that. We're not going into that. Thanks. Now I don't feel so guilty. <laughs> <laughs> Those guilt, guilt practices helped you. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm learning. <laughs> no, you're good. Yeah. And you're really happy yeah. with what you're doing. And you've. Oh, I love it. Because I, I, I've learned how to let go. And I'm aware of what the mind's been feeding me that's not true. And, it, and I'm not reacting to it. And I keep moving back into what's the more loving response. And sometimes it's just being patient with myself. Uh, sometimes it's just being grateful for the situation or compassion as we all find and, our way. And compassion for our ourselves and each other exactly yeah but for ourselves but for each other and ourselves right you're like right. why didn't i do that why did i do that it's if like if you'd have known different you'd have done different we're learning yeah we're all waking up. you're right we're on a journey we to are wake up it's all good it all serves a purpose but in these books you really go through and they're beautiful books the aboriginal secrets of awakening and <laughs> this one i took with me to australia the secrets of aboriginal healings and their culture and what you've learned and distilled from them is something everybody should know mm. because they are where we came from and I think where we're going. It, to survive, this is where we need to go back. Exactly. And to go beyond survival, we need to go right. back there too. <laughs> and if, well, and it's about finding peace. When you get into these awakened states, you're just at acceptance of everything. And the earth has so much to share with us, so much uh, beauty and and harmony and, and it's a vibration when you get into their state what i did with these aborigines putting paint on my face the earth is speaking to us and we realize that these bodies are earth bodies yes and you start feeling the love that the earth is giving you and it's tremendous and the earth really is a conscious being yes loves us more than we can ever imagine it's given us these vehicles to play in how beautiful is that thank you robbie thank you alan such a pleasure. Yeah. Website. What's your website and how can we? People can find me at HoltzWellness.com. H-O-L-Z-W-E-L-L-N-E-S-S. -L -L -E Holtz Wellness. And any final words you want to leave those people? Here, you can talk to them. <laughs> you know, I want, I want people to know that most of us are not supposed to be sick. You, you have the ability to heal. You are a powerful healer. Your body wants to heal. So start paying attention to where you might be creating that and know that you can heal. Your body wants to heal. But it's not about blame. You can't blame, no, blame yourself. No it's like, no, what, do, what am I not, what is interacting here? <clears throat> What's in the way of my, right. my pure connection? Right. I love that the Aborigines are like, there's no criticism, so you block some energy. It, it's all, it all serves a purpose. It's all good. It's over. Let, let go of yeah. it. Get over stop it. Stop the criticism, the judgment, comparison. Really? Can go. I stop complaining about my parents? It's, <laughs> no, it's a choice, kidding. but I would recommend it. I do. I'm so over it. So I'm complete. <laughs> no, no, no. They were great people. Very fine people. They taught you much. They did. Yes. They taught me, like, you know, all this therapy I keep doing was worth it. <laughs> it's <laughs> no, it was, it's... It's like when you get like it's all to uplifting our soul's presence here, then we can be free right. of it. it. It's there for a reason. It's there for your soul's growth. And it's very deliberately, geniusly designed exactly the way you need it. Mm. So mm. that's why the Aborigines will say, have these experiences and then let them go. You guys tend to hang on to stuff. Right. So. The other thing I just want to ask you about is that they are more connected to spirit in a sense mm -hmm. than and, and the, the ancestors and the answer and they travel there and I, I think that's mm -hmm. that's a big part of their world. Yeah, it's right. more real. Those other okay, the non-physical world is more real than the and physical. They will tell you that is more real than this. This is right. really an illusion. Yeah. Yeah, and what's the evidence of that? I mean, well, how I mean, this is why they spend more than half of their time in this dream time state. Mm. They, they unplug from the mind and they plug into this greater consciousness. That's a powerful thing. But you to see, do. that's our destiny too. And they and what about meditating each day? I think it's the smartest thing you can do. It's going to bring in a, a stronger life force. It's going to 
get a little bit of that mind power deflated a little bit, lifting the needle, you know, so mm. to speak. I think meditation, it's, it's, a, it's a form of dream time. Mm. It's one of the most it powerful is. things you can do. The answers are all within. It is. And in some ways, psychology has done us a, a disservice. Of course, it's been great understanding yourself, but to say that we're fabricating, like if a plant is talking to you and telling you, you're not making this up, or the earth is talking to you, do you see that's where psychology has done a disservice right. because it's limited our capabilities of our mind. Exactly. And the earth does talk to us. It does. And, and, and we have to just learn how to listen. And that's where we have to quiet the mind. And that's where meditation is great. And that's also where we have to trust. Like, yes. I'm getting this. The earth is talking to me. Those stars are talking. Uh, I, I can feel it. I can feel the rain coming and so we because you're part yes, of it. Yes, and we have yes. to trust that part that overcomes the Western psychology that says, no, you're crazy. Well, that's they want you to believe that. They want so they can control us. Exactly. And that's, We're waking up. Let's keep waking up. Right. Thank you, Robbie. You're so welcome, Alan. Robbie Holt, she lives in Seattle, and she has private clients. And I'm telling you, one hour consultation will... That's all they need. They'll understand what they did and how to create what they want. Thanks for watching New Realities. I've been talking to Robbie Holtz and to the amazing book that she's written about Aborigines, Aborigine healing and the awakening of these Aborigines because they really do live, and I've been there, they live in a different state of consciousness and um, we can live there too. So I recommend her books, her work, and also go to my website, newrealities.com and you could email me at newrealities at earthlink.net and give me some feedback about this program and my whole series of new realities. Thanks for watching. Man.